hello. I've got a few few things um, to say as an introduction. The first is for you because it's um, an experiment for us. It's uh, really early on a Monday, and you're here, braving the w Siberian weather. So thank you for being here today for that first daily time masterclass that we ever had. So thank you so much for being here. And so right now, um, he has got like a lot of baseball hats. So I don't know what which one start. First is a member of the Arabic Association for Cultural Exchange here in Luxembourg. And uh, so thank you to all the association, Niza, and everyone, René, thank you so much, and everyone at your association, you're doing a marvelous job. We are really pleased to, uh, to work on you with that. Um, and so Efan, what can I say? He's a journalist, he's a festival director, he's the selectioner of the Arabic uh, program for the Dubai Film Festival. And, and for Luxembourg, we have been extremely honored on the side of Mimi, who was chairing the, lady, uh, the jury, to have him as a proud jury member. So thank you for doing that marathon, and thank you for braving the weather as well. And um, I think this is now your way to go. So thank you, Mr. Erfan Rashid. Thank you very much. Uh, Alexis said all. Thank you. And uh, thank you for the festival who invited me, and thank you for the association, uh, Arabic Association for Cultural Exchange, who they introduced me to the festival, and I'm honored to be a member of this association, and we are going to do something maybe um, very, very uh, important for the relationships between uh, Arab countries and um, Luxembourg. And who knows, maybe one day we will have also an Arab film festival in this city with the support of Luxembourg Festival. Um, talking about um, or talking on Arab cinema, I, it is a very, very hard uh, work because we are talking about a very wide place, a very wide territory. We are around 22 Arab countries, and we are talking about a very long story, history of the um, cinema, because the cinema in Arab countries began soon after the first screening of Lumiere Brothers in uh, 1895, if I am not wrong. In December, it was in Paris, and in uh, January um, 1896, it was in Alexandria, and then in uh, Cairo, and in Port Said, and then in Syria, Lebanon, and all those countries. So it is a long story, so I will, I will try to, to summarize in this hour some points just to begin a kind of discussion or a spotlight on this long history. But I prefer to begin from the present, from today, now. We will begin with a trailer of a film, which you will maybe you will hear about within next four or five days. It is very important film, not only because it is candidate for one of the candidates for the Oscar as a best documentary for this year, but it is a very important film about the human being sense and the life sense. So. تخيل انت بيرك في بيتك ما تحس ان البنات كان لعبتهم من اول السادس. لكن المشكله ما يعني المشكله على البنات. 
يعني ما في ما في محل طلعتون عليه <تصفيق> هنا هو قبل يضاين اكثر شيء كله ضاين والله فكرنا ما يلي نحن والشباب ولينا بركي انه جاز هون هون يجي حاصرنا انه في عنا سبب انا ما بدي اقول بدي اقول I didn't begin the talking about Arab cinema from this film only because it is Oscar candidate. It is deserves a good film and it has the prize in Dubai Film Festival. But because I would like to dedicate, with your permission, this event today to those people and especially to the children who were killed in Syria in this absurd, unjustified war. Last of them, 71 children killed on the 21st of, of this year, only children. And there are hundreds of children killed there. Um, they are killing the future of this nation, this peoples, because they are killing the younger generation and they are forcing the young generation to to, to, to migrate, to, to leave the, their, their country. So I dedicate my work to those people who will not live with us more. This film is not the only one is candidate to the Oscar. This year, there is also a feature film, a Lebanese uh, film called The Insult by Ziad Dwayri. It is one of the five films candidated for the Oscar for the best non-English speaking films and both films they have a good chance to be awarded but anyway arriving there to, to be nominated for Oscar it means that they, they those films touched the heart of people who candidate them to give them the possibility to arrive to the wide uh, audience mm, can we see that something from insult I mean Okay. The insult is a film which discovers how the apparent peace which 
a country like Lebanon lives, it's a false situation. Anything, and as, as a very simple insult, created a political confrontation again between Palestinian and, and uh, Lebanese. And this film is part of a, a very um, important um, current of the Lebanese cinema done by young generation, and most of them, they are women. With their films, with their documentaries, with their feature films, they are now reopening all the uh, old dossiers of the uh, civil war in, uh, in Lebanon, and they put in confrontation, dialogue, confrontation, those who had to kill each other, to, to, to fight each other, just to arrive to the moment to close those dossiers, because there are so many dossiers open, and so many um, and injustice happen, and no one had the right uh, uh, law to, to have the, the, uh, the, 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 the rights in, the, in those uh, confrontations. So it is a very important uh, idea of rewriting or rereading the, the history of a country. Now, I will leave the present to go backward to the uh, history of uh, cinema in Arab countries. As, as you notice that I s insist to call cinema in Arab countries, and I'm not saying Arabic cinema, because it is not right to call the cinema which produced or done in those countries, country member in the Arab leagues, uh, only Arabic cinema because it is not real Arabic talking cinema. Most of them is Arabic talking cinema, but it's not only Arabic cinema. If we do that, maybe we have to call the Australian and New Zealand and uh, American cinema, English cinema. The language itself, only the language, doesn't give the nationality of the cinema. Personally, I consider the film is a son or a daughter of the author. So who, who gives the nationality to the film is the author, is the director of the film, not only the language, because I can be Portuguese, but I do a film in Russian uh, language, but that is my film, the direct, director film. So I am keen to talk about Arab talents or Arab countries' talents, cinematographic talents, so um, because if you take a country like Iraq, there are so many languages in that country. There is Arabic, Kurdish, Turkmen, Babylon, Assyrians, and so many languages, which all of them, they are talked, written, and languages, and they have their story besides. So if there is a Kurdish director who done a film, I can't call his film Arabic, but it's Iraqi film, Iraqi Kurdish film. It's a Kurdish film of that director. And I'm going to show you a piece of uh, film, The Dark Wind of uh, the Kurdish, Iraqi Kurdish, uh, Hussein Hassan, which talks about the uh, uh, suffering of the Yazidi women during ISIS attacks in Kurdistan, in Mosul, in the, in, in uh, other parts of the north of Iraq. Kemal Hazi Yatay'a. Min Karana! Kemper bu hara çekilin, geçin ha Kemper. Fatih gelme ne ayı? 
Это на осмолок перевел по двум духе. Okay, this is a Iraqi Kurdish film, so it is not Iraq is Arab countries as a member of the Arab League, but this is a Kurdish film. So in this case, we have to talk about the um, individual personality of the director, as, a, as I told. Returning back to the history, the first screening in, 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 uh, of cinema, of film, in, uh, in Arab countries began in Egypt. After a few weeks, then, the, the, the first screening of uh, Lumiere Brothers in Grand Café in Paris, that was in December uh, 1895, and in January 19, 1896, there was a screening in, um, in Alexandria, in Egypt, and then soon after that, someday in, uh, in um, Cairo, and then in Port Said. After that, after some week, some, some month, in Syria and Lebanon, the screenings began, and the cinema uh, halls, they began to be uh, uh, constructed, but the real um, production of the film begins in 1927. Uh, the, let us say the first um, Egyptian film, Egyptian by done by Egyptian, uh, 1922. Before that, there was a, um, uh, an Italian uh, uh, bank, Banca di Roma. They began to produce with uh, um, Egyptian uh, personalities uh, films where the first director in Egyptian cinema, Mohammed Karim, began to act as an actor. Then soon he began to uh, do his, uh, his films. Many uh, politicians, they thought about cinema because Egypt it is not a rich country, it, is, it has no many industries, but the idea of transforming this new art in a um, font of, of, of economic font, it was there. So in 1935, uh, one of the ministers of, the, of, the, of that era, Talat Harb, decided to create Studio Mesr and it became like the Chinachita of Cairo, and they began to do their films, and a new generation of directors come out from those studios. The studio became a, as a house of, of, the, uh, of, of the cinema, and very, very, very fast, the Egyptian cinema began to spread in the uh, Arabic countries, and that was one of the elements to spread the Egyptian dialect in all the Arab countries. If you go in Morocco or in Iraq or in Sudan and you speak in uh, Egyptian dialect, all the people will understand you. That because of cinema and uh, Egyptian songs. Because the language traveled with those, uh, with those talents. So 
um, very, very, very fast, the cinema became one of the font of the economy of Egypt. Um, then uh, the 40s and 50s was the best uh, period of the, of the production of cinema in, uh, in Egypt. And that production called to Egypt so many Arab talents from Lebanon especially and Syria and Palestine they began to work in, 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 the, uh, in Egyptian cinema and they began to return back to their countries and begin their, their, their industry in their, uh, in their country. Most of uh, North Africa countries like Algeria, Tunisia and Morocco, they didn't become a real production in cinema production before the independence because the, the, the French colonialism, colonialism in that period imposed the uh, domination of the, of the French industry cinema to, the, to those countries which, which was part of the policy of uh, the, the French to dominate also culturally the, the, those countries. After the independence, Morocco came out, Tunisia came out, and Algeria. And very fastly, Tunisian cinema became one of the most important currents of the, of the, of the Arab cinema, which in the 70s, we have 70s and 80s and 90s, we have names like Nouri Bouzid, Farid Boukdir, and uh, Mufid Atlatli, and also the young generation arriving to Kauthar bin Haniya, um, which opened uh, uncertain regard uh, program in, in Cannes with her uh, the, the Beauty and, dog, and Dogs and it was a, 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 a big uh, success for this young talent which concentrated in, in herself all the currents of the, the Tunisian talents. She is uh, sarcastic, she is realistic and she is very critical to the uh, Returning to um, Algeria, um, uh, Algeria after the independence in 1959, uh, uh, the government put all its forces on the uh, production of cinema and we had very fast, we had Mohammed El Akhdar Hamina who did the uh, Laban Doras and uh, who arrived to Cannes and, to, and he had the, the Palm d'Or in Cannes Film Festival, and it was a great, um, a great success for whole Arab countries because he became as an example to the young generations, not only in, in, uh, in Algerian cinema, but also, okay. But even we have a very, very, very important cinema in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and also in Syria and Lebanon, the Egyptian cinema, um, despite the crisis which it faces, um, remain the most important cinema as industry because it is the only country where we can talk about sto uh, industry. In Lebanon, there is a cineast productions in Syria, in uh, Tunisia, Algeria, but we have no real industry. Uh, only Egypt has its machine of industry and they, they produce between, now they, they are producing about 80, 90 films by year, and, but sometime they were able to produce two, 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 um, 250 films or 260 films uh, by year. The Egyptian archive now contains around 3,000 or something more than 3,000 titles of cinema, which is a great number of, of, uh, of films. Obviously, not all, all those films are important uh, films, but we can, we can think that Egyptian cinema has names like Salah Abu Saif, Tawfiq uh, Saleh, Yusuf Shaheen, and, and also the young generation after those uh, ma ma maestros. We have a big number of, of talents. Okay. Um, I suggest to see something from the dog and uh, the thief and the dog, 
by uh, Kamal Sheikh, and we will talk about uh, that. حضرات المستشارين أنا اللي حدافع عن نفسي أنا صحيح شلت المسدس لكن رافع الوان هو اللي علمني ضرب النار أنا ما قتلتش البواب لأني لا أعرفه ولا يعرفني هو اتقتل عشان كان خدام رؤوف علوان هو ده السبب امبارح بالليل فضلت صورته قدام عينيا حتى لما نمت على همومي جاري في المنام داريت وش منه قال لي ما تحزنش يا سعيد ملايين زي بيموتوا غلط من غير حساب انا هفضل ورا رؤوف لما شده معايا في تربتي ان شاء الله حتى ما اشوفش بنتي بنام اوكي ام سوري ذير از نوت سبتايتل فور ذات ذس فيلم um is taken by the um, adapted from the, the um, uh, Najib Mahfouz um, novel the thief and dogs which is done by Kamal Sheikh who was a very very particular director in the in the um, Egyptian cinema he is a realistic director but very experimental very can i say uh, i can say very uh, avant-garde uh, um, uh, uh, director. So we, we saw the, the, the scene, which is like a, a, a nightmare um, trial against the, the man who is accused in the, in the, in the film. Uh, Najib Mahfouz was, he wasn't the, the only one, only writer which the Egyptian cinema took from him subjects or, 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 or novels, but he was the most, uh, the, the, the director who gave to the cinema many of his books. He began with writing um, screenplays for the other directors. He wrote about um, 15 uh, screenplays for the, for the directors, but he never participated in those around 20, 22 films taken by his work, his, his books. He never um, been in the, in the, on board for the, for the screen playwriting. He left the uh, freedom to the, to the directors to do whatever they want with, with his books. And he went to the cinema to watch the film as a normal, uh, uh, normal uh, viewer of, of the film. Uh, he gave the life of Egypt to the Arabic cinema, um, to, the, to the Egyptian cinema, which is a, a, a very great contribute to the, to, the, to the cinema in general. And his works, um, one of his works, uh, uh, Arturo Rupistein, the, the Mexican uh, director, took it, uh, I think it's also um, the, the the Thief and the, 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 the Dogs, the, the same uh, uh, novel, and he did it in a, a Mexican, uh, Mexican way of, of, the, of the film. Beside uh, Najib Mahfouz, Najib Mahfouz as uh, Egyptian pronounced the name, there is a name, a great name, who is Yusuf Shaheen. Yusuf Shaheen in around 57 years from 19, 1950 till 2008, he did 37 films, feature films, and five um, uh, short films. Who watches those films can read really not only the history of Egypt, but he can also read what will happen in Egypt. He always anticipate what is going to happen in, in Egypt. In the last 15 years of his life, 
he predict what will happen in Egypt. For, for example, with the, his film, The Migrant and the Destiny, he predicted what is fundamentalism and the fundamentalism is coming and we have to be aware, but no one as usually uh, heard him. And then in, 19, in 2007, when he did his last film, the, um, the Chaos, he predicted what happened in Egypt in 2011. Let us see a scene of chaos. Okay. In uh, 2008, when um, Yusuf Shaheen was in Venice and he was helped by his uh, nephews, and he was part of the competition of the of uh, Venice Film Festival. I interviewed him and I told him, what is the sense why you did this film in this moment of your life? Maybe you should have to do a comedy to, to, to have fun. And he told me, I am aware about what is happening. When you hear one man says that I am the power and I own everything and I decide for everything, that swears me, and I am afraid for, for that. And that was 2008. 2011, the so-called Arab Spring, and the, uh, the fall of all dictatorship and the begin of chaos in Arab world. That was the chaos which uh, Yusuf Shaheen was saying, pay attention, we are going toward the chaos, but as usual, no one hears the poets, no, no one hears uh, um, cineasts or, or, or artists. The chaos become, everything is happening, dictatorship is fall down, and no, no progress t till now. But that chaos creates some movement or some progress in the, in the, uh, in the Arabic culture situation in general. First of all, the dictators are not fearing more people. When the Saddam Hussein state, you can't fall down from the, in the, in the middle of Baghdad, inside of Iraqis fall down a very huge nightmare. The, the dictator is only a puppet, he can fall down. And that chaos created Another chaos, which we are living now, wars and killing and, and no, 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 any order in, that, in this area of, 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 of the world, but gives another element of uh, freedom to the uh, intellectuals, to directors, to artists, to say more than they could say during the dictatorship. Now we have a young generation of directors which also with the help of uh, the new technologies, the digital uh, cameras and digital uh, editing, they are doing their, their works. Maybe those works are not important, are not great films, but anyway, it is something, as Galileo said, despite anything, it's moving. We are moving forward. So there is now a new generation of directors, they are maybe, they, they still on the surface of the things, they are not going deep, but one, one time they will, one day they will go deeper and deeper, and it's, it's very important. In this situation, we have 
new currents of, of, uh, of cinema. One of them is the women cinema, women directors in Arab, Arab words, because since the beginning, till the, 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 the beginning of the new um, century, the women in the Arabic cinema was a supporter, has a, also always a supporter rule. Now we are beginning to talk about women characters in films done by women directors and female directors and done by also male directors. The, uh, the woman is becoming not only a problem, but only also as a character, also a personality in the, in the films. And we have a plenty of directors from Morocco to Iraq, including um, Gulf countries, which is a new thing, this, this we have women directors. When uh, the um, Saudi director uh, Haifa al-Mansour did her fa first feature film, Wajda, and I interviewed her in uh, Venice Film Festival, when Al Arabiya screened that interview, you can't imagine the number of insults she had because they consider her as a, something, she did something, the biggest sin in the world because she did a film talking about the freedom of a young uh, girl who wants to have a bicycle, only up to ride a bicycle. If I count the number of insults that this director had, it is something very, very impressive. But uh, despite this, there are new um, women directors, and I think that women directors will be the new force of Arab cinema. Because, as usual, you women, you are the most important uh, energy in the society. So also in cinema, they are the most important energy in, in uh, I, can, I can tell many, many names of, of the women directors. Maybe we can see Hind Bujuma, it was better tomorrow. This film was shot in uh, 2011 and premiered in, uh, in Venice 2011. And it is in the same moments where in Al Habib Burgeba Street there was the uprising of young people. Hind Bujuma with her intelligence. I think, I would say with the women intelligence, female intelligence, she took her camera and went behind the scene to see what is happening to the city. This lady is the hidden uh, image which all the television of the world didn't document. She wants her right and the rights are 
<laughs> up there. No, no one had uh, the, uh, his right. And she documented that moment while the young people in the, in the industry, they were doing their revolution. She talks about the life of the family, the real family, which was squeezed by the uh, dictatorship of Ben, ben Ali. The same uh, Jihan and Jem did in, um, in uh, her first film, The Square. Also her, she went to go to, to, to see what is happening behind the scene because all of us knew what Al-Tahrir Square was there, but what was behind Al-Tahrir Square? What, is ha what was happening in that moment uh, behind Al-Tahrir st uh, Street? No one from the male directors went to do that. They were all of them in the, in the, in the square to document and to talk about the, 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 the day life in the square, not the real peop people life. Um, and that is what I wanted always. I asked my uh, friends from Iraqi directors to document everything. After the fall of Saddam Hussein regime, all the Iraqi young directors, they began to make their films, but they began to make author film, which is very, very, very important thing, but there were the country which was damaging, which was falling down day by day. And they didn't take care about what is happening to the country. They took care about what are their, their ideas to make the film. I asked them, please document everything, even a small stone in the street, which you are seeing now, tomorrow will not be there. I need to know the history of this period, this country, this era, we have to document everything, and we have the possibility to document that. But no one, not all, all of them, they took that, that suggestion, and, and we lost every, um, too many things. Um, one other problem which Arab cinema in, those, in these last 10 years, 15 years, touched is the migration issue. So many films done by migration, about the migration uh, issue and um, the suffering of, of, of migrants during their, 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 their travel and during their stay in the other countries. Only one director, and once again, a woman director, did a film about the same issue, but from the point of view of the people who remains in the cities and the villages. The familiars, the mothers, the fathers and the sisters, brothers, who remain when the young man crosses the, the, the sea. Um, I would like to close my, my, this, this, this meeting with you with scenes from Benzine by um, Sarah Abedi, which was in Dubai Film Festival last, last edition and it is a real, a real document about the sufferance of the people who remains in the city. دخلوا بعض وهدوا على الرئيس واللي غرد بغرد واللي قاعد يطفطف يطفطف اللي خلت يمشي لك هو شاور لي ولا قال لي حكم معاه ما فقتش بيه وانت وين طاح الليل وما روحش هكا حد شبحي فيه ايش رايك تمشي لايطاليا وتحوم على ولادك وسالها يا علمي مش عارف سالها I have to confess, Sundus Bilhassan is not an actress, she is a ballerina. 
and I loved her. And my wife knows that I love her, so. <laughs> okay, one of the things which I learned in this festival is to be punctual in, on time. I think, Matthew, we finish on, on time or we have some time for Q&A? Huh? It's okay? We have time? Okay. Now, um, I can speak longer, but I, I prefer to hear from you, and maybe you can exchange some idea about what is related to Arab cinema. So. Seems all clear, huh? No questions. <laughs> okay. I wanted to say that I, I did produce a film of um, Mr. Mes a Spanish lady, Lisa Peralta. She made a, a movie about Moroccan cinema, but uh, going through Moroccan cinema and the issue of migration, of uh, of going away from the country and those people who stay. It's called um, uh, Los Ulises. Uh, the, the Ulysses of the 21st century, mm -hmm. which is an interesting uh, piece of work, uh, but only about Moroccan cinema um, from, from the 50s, I think, and even before to today, and always the, the theme of migration, of leaving the country, or uh, the, the idea of going back maybe to the country, but always migration or, or going back. It's a very interesting one, and then I must also say that uh, distributing uh, a young Moroccan cineast, which is uh, uh, Hisham Lasri, uh, who is also somebody, I think that he's, he's a man, he's not a woman, but he's produced by women. Uh, uh, that's what I know by his wife, but also by another uh, um, uh, woman producer. And his characters in his films, the strong characters are always women. So I can, just from my point of view, from my experience, um, uh, just uh, yeah, confirm what you're saying that women is are coming stronger and stronger in in cinema out of of uh, as directors but also as actors and characters in cinema even if it's done by by men. I have to feel. Leila Sharaibi, the the the, the, the um, producer of the last film of uh, Hasham, is she's a young, very young lady. She married last year. And <laughs> uh, uh, she is one of the greatest uh, producer in, in uh, Moroccan cinema, and she's doing a real um, job, a great job. And working with Hisham, Hisham is not a, a simple director, uh, and <laughs> and it's a risk. It's, uh, usual, his his films are great films, and we had all uh, all his films in Dubai Film Festival. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. So. Um, uh, one, once, one more uh, again, um, once again, uh, uh, Leila or uh, Rula Nasser or um, uh, Marianne, Marianne Khoury, they are really, really um, great machine of, 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 of production and they, they choose their talents and they are great talents. Thank you for your performance and especially this evening. My question to you, what do you think personally on the archives and all the cinema texts, what happened in the country there? Because it's a memory of the people. What is your own are, are cinema perspective? Archive? Cinema yes, archive? In, in general. In general. Mm. Because I know some initiatives are done from the European side to mm. safeguard Egypt, etc. Mm. The French are behind, but nothing moves. Of course, you know for mm. the purpose about it. Uh, unfortunately, your own sorry, sorry. Thank you. unfortunately for the archives there was a, a great archive in in egypt and they 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 conserved for a long time the the films but not in a the proper proper way and in some moment they decided to send the all rights to one arabic channel to the art of of sheikh saleh kamel uh, uh, channel and now he has all the story of uh, Egyptian uh, cinema. Um, there is no a real archive in the other countries. There was still now the cinematography of Algier, which is the eldest cinematography, uh, uh, cine cinetic of, of Algier, the, the, the eldest one. But I don't think 
it is well uh, conserved, but it is the only one. In Iraq, we have no cinema archive. In, in some other country, the films are not uh, conserved properly. Uh, I, I tried through the Cinematheque of Bologna to, to do something, but Cinematheque of Bologna can't uh, conserve all the uh, Arabic cinema. They restored some, some of Salah Abu Saif film, films, but um, there's no the culture of archive, which is a pity. And um, paradoxically, uh, using the digitizing the films, it gives maybe the more possibility to conserve the film, but it's not really because the, 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 the disc could be damaged in any moment. So when you don't have the, the negative of the film or the, 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 the real material of the film, they are going to lose everything. They are, you are going to lose the story of the film, the history of the film. So um, that is one of the problems which they have, the ministers, uh, ministries of, of culture, they have to raise. I, I don't have many, many informations about that. I have only fear about it and concern about it. <laughs> maybe, maybe you could say something about uh, censorship in Arab countries and if the people actually ha can see the films we have been talking about here. Yeah, yeah um, there is not a unique censorship in whole Arab countries. Uh, for example, in Iraq there is no censorship, but there is the the. the the personal censorship, the, the, the concern from the uh, sectarian groups, uh, if, if they can interpret your viewing of the, of, of the things. Uh, censorship itself, it wasn't in absolute the problem. The, the, the how you can, uh, we can say it, the, the volonté of the governments was the most dangerous thing for the, for the cinema. I can, I can mm, tell you something about a story which Tawfiq Saleh, the director, the Egyptian director who passed away uh, three years ago, when he did a film that called The Long Days on Saddam Hussein uh, uh, history, Saddam Hussein had the first viewing of the film and he called Tawfiq Saleh and the director of the cinema center in uh, Baghdad and the screenplay writer of the film. They were convocated to the uh, presidential palace and they waited there for hours since the president came. And when he came, he'd go inside the room, they were seated there and he asked his uh, guards, call that gentleman, uh, an old man came came in with a popular uh, dress, and he sat on the ground. He didn't sit on, on, the, on the sofa. He sat on the ground, and Saddam Hussein, without caring about his three uh, guests, Tawfiq Saleh, and the director, and the screenplay writer, he asked the old man, do you remember when I came to your house with the bullet in my leg? and you took out the bullet. Did I suffer? Did I say, ah? Oh. The old man said, no, absolutely no, Mr. President. You can't suffer. You can't express sufferings. Thank you very much. You can go. And he returns to the three guests. Thank you very much. You can go. And that was the censorship of Saddam Hussein to cut the scene who Tawfiq Saleh realistically directed when even, even maybe God, if you take a bullet from his leg, he will suffer, he will say ah, or he will have some expression on his face. But Saddam Hussein, no. And they had to cut that, that scene, re, uh, that is, that's, that's, we talk, I don't know, I don't know because I have to, I talk about God or Saddam Hussein. <laughs> but I, I think it is Saddam Hussein. I think Saddam. 
So that is the censorship. Uh, I don't think that the censorship will be canceled in, 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 from Arab countries. But if there are talents, for example, um, today, no, yesterday, someone was, was asking me about the Iranian cinema. There is no a censorship more tough than Iranian censorship. But although the Iranian directors, they found a path to say their stories without having the censorship, uh, uh, how you call it, the, mm -hmm, uh, yeah, loading on their, their, their shoulder. It is the way how you, you can tell things and you have to zigzag with, with, the, with, the, with the censorship. That's the problem. The, the, the problem is the opposition is not accepted in Arabic countries, so. My, my, Much that people can see this in the country. I ah, know that. Ah, okay, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry. No, the the the, the people can can see, but the problem is the cinemas now are di disappearing in so many so many countries. For example, in in Egypt, in some time there were around five hundred. In, in Cairo, there were some hundred of of cinemas. Now there are 70 or, or, or 75 uh, cinemas. In Baghdad, all the cinemas became stores. There is no cinema in the, in the Someone is creating, in the, in the malls, uh, creating cinema. On the opposite side, in Dubai, for example, they are creating always more and more uh, cinemas. And there is more requests for, for, for cinemas. People want to go to the cinema because they are, I think they are tired from the TV and the TV doesn't give them the possibility. But when you go to the cinema and there is no car parking, there is no security and the, the, the cinema could be blown up in any moment, you are not going to bring your family and go to the cinema. If there is the possibility to go to the, to, to the cinema with your family and watch the film like you are going to the stadium or and, uh, anywhere else, you can go. There is the volunteer to, to watch the film, but there is no the condition to watch the film. Matthew says it's over. Thank you very much. <laughs>